stop here and let our tyres down, so it'll be, it'll be 20 minutes. where the creek is. Well, you guys come back in a week just to see if you can see how much the water will drop. It's getting close to... Uh camp because he comes at night. If you just don't leave stuff outside your swag at night because they'll carry it away, they might not take it very far. But anything that smells, particularly your underpants. The last known photograph. Oh, recording. Oh, we're good. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks very much. Thank you. All good? Let's go. Very good. Ready for the second part of Australia's lungs, if you want to call these the sort of the lungs of the eastern side, is the Lake Air Basin which is where the Simpson sits in. And the Lake Air Basin starts over here uh, towards uh, Longreach, um, or near the Baku over here, and the Thompson near Longreach. Uh, and then all these series of channels that are, make up what's collectively the channel country. So we've got Farris Creek, uh, the Diamantina, the Georgina down through here, uh, which is on the eastern side of the Simpson Desert, and then uh, the western side where you've got uh, you know, these sort of fairly terminal sort of rivers uh, like the Hale and the Todd and the Fink all going down into uh, the Macumba um, and then um, uh, what the Lake Air Basin is essentially doing sort of go down there, is to drain down into Lake Air which um, um, we've got Birdsville across here and then this is the Northern Territory um, Queensland border and this is the South Australian Queensland border. This is Mungatiri National Park, which is the rabbit proof fits. I think you guys yeah. had lunch at mm -hmm. across here. And then this is the um, regional reserve boundary along here. This is the conservation park along along here. So you would have driven uh, from Birds Hill out to here to Napanerica, which is the um, Big Red. And you would have crossed over Big Red and hit the QA line. And then you would have crossed. June after June after June. There was a big, if anyone saw the big white salt lake to the south, yeah. Yeah. that's that one there. Um, and then Air Creek, which you would have gone through the water a couple of times, just here, uh, out to here, and that's where you would have had lunch there on the QA line. Um, and then you would have continued out June after June after June, and then down this swale to here. And so we're currently sitting just about there. Oh, so we haven't gone into South Australia at all? No, we're not. No, no. said not everyone bought their passport, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, we're, what we will be doing, and so here, that mickery is down in this area down here, and you can see these points are all points that I've recorded. That one is the... you mean that one you, you found? Yes. 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 Yep. Dingoes. So tonight I've got to be careful. I'm going to get dragged off by a dingo. Here she goes up right through the campsite.
It's a good example of a spider hole. Got a lizard or a goanna has gone after. So you can see there, there's a the spider hole perfectly formed. But the goanna, you can see the furrows out left and right as it scratches its front claws. It's followed, it's ducked down and followed the spider down, down its hole, perfectly formed hole there, until it got the spider. So it's a really good example of, of finding a meal in the desert. Now that has been worked, so you can see that there's some chippings, some like flaking marks. Yeah. So this would have been part of a sort of a, a larger stone that's been, you know, been knocked and hammered, yep. and used as a like a scraper and a cutter. Like you can feel the the edge is quite is quite sharp. It would have been probably part of a larger, you know, maybe a, a blade or a scraper. And the way that they were that they were formed was the, you know, like what they call a core, and then they, they use a percussion stone to hit. And they would flake, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. bits and pieces off. Yeah, and so you can see, you can see like you know a flaked edge, and you can see there's some chippings here, which indicate that it's been worked. But often when they got to this point, they were just discarded. And so <clears throat> when you're walking through these sorts of these swales, particularly when you get these sort of clay pans, see where you know where the water has been yep. collecting, you know, you start to see these. And we can Well, very similar to this, but in the middle there was a, a clay pan, and on the clay pan there was a lot of vegetation on there. And uh, we thought, oh, well, that might be an interesting place to set some traps because it just looked interesting. Anyway, we, we caught four short-tailed desert mice in this little clay pan. And that animal hadn't been uh, captured in that area or in the Simpson Desert for 18 years. And so mm. clearly what that clay pan was acting was one of those refuge sites. Yes. And it's a tiny little female dragon in the trap. She's lovely. Mm. Uh, but this one is what we call a sub-adult and it's starting to get these, see these sort of darker marks on yep. his throat and um, the males get really, get really dark and <clears throat> Tenophorus pictus, painted dragon, when they're in breeding, they're just stunning. They get big blue throats and all sorts of, and all sorts of. Oh, when's breeding season? Uh, over the, so that, they'd start around September, October and yep. then that means that they clutch would get the you know the the young ones would get the start of the sorry the end of summer to yeah. sort of but these are gamids um if you rub them on their belly like this they become quite um quite um sedate <laughs> number of yeah. uh, um, measurements that are taken that 
are used as diagnostic features for various uh, different species. So the jaw length is one of them. And then the snout to vent, so from his tip of his head to his cloaca, which is just there. That's the term. Yeah. <laughs> And he even lifts his tail up yeah. very politely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the total length. this up and down these were obviously had multiple uses and they would often use these to sort of um, uh, smooth wooden artifacts as well so The rodents, the hoppy mice and the sand inland mouse, which are the sort of dominant rodents we get out here, so rod rodents being placental, um, uh, have permanent burrow systems. And so they'll be sort of, you know, they'll have a, a burrow system that'll sit underneath these sort of hummock grasses, like this cane grass here. Yeah. Whereas these guys here are, are quite nomadic. They don't have, um, you know, a fixed home range. And so they'll, um, you know, spend the day sheltered in discarded goanna burrows or dragon burrows and that sort of thing but <clears throat> some work that I was doing with oh. Sydney University um, we were putting radio col uh, trackers on these and these guys were traveling up to two kilometers in a night
on the last trek where it said well what's you know what's it matter whether there's a lesser hairy footed nana running around on the dune or we see a black kite flying over or whether we're seeing bearded dragons or that sort of thing and for us I think <coughs> Australia's had such a catastrophic history of land degradation that I think we need to gain a better understanding and reverence and respect for the landscapes in which we have and to manage them better than what we are so that future generations can be uh, you know can appreciate the extraordinary biodiversity 